right, so let's get into the kinds of keywords that there are. So first of all, there's two types of keywords. I, I hope you guys can see this picture all right. I tried to make it bigger, but it gets a little bl blurry. But this was the best picture that I could uh, come up with that, that really showed um, a good description of what I'll be talking about. So basically, there are short tail keywords or seed keywords, and there are long tail keywords. And then, of course, there's uh, keywords that are in between those, those two. But those are the two main types, okay? So a short tail keyword would be a phrase like shoes. You know, it's just very plain. There's no descriptive words that are with it. It's just shoes, someone looking for shoes. We have no idea what they really want. Do they want pictures of shoes? Do they want to buy shoes? What kinds of shoes are they looking for? You know, we have no idea what it is that they want shoes. We, they just typed in shoes, okay? So that's a short tail or a seed keyword. Now, something that would be a, a long tail keyword would be something like red Nike men's running shoes. That's very specific. We know exactly what they want. We even know the color that they're looking for. So that's super duper targeted. Now, of course, the word shoes is going to get way more searches than red Nike men's running shoes. However, a very important thing to take into account and to keep in your mind is that there's no way, there's virtual, it's virtually impossible this day and age to rank for seed keywords. Things like shoes, purses, digital marketing, you know, that digital marketing would actually be more in between those two, like the word marketing, for example, that would be a seed keyword. It's just, and even digital marketing would be like, you probably wouldn't want to go after that term because there's just going to be so much competition that you wouldn't actually ever get a chance to rank for that term. And what point is it to try to go after a term that you have no chance of ranking for? It's just a waste of time and energy. So the whole point of keyword research is to find terms that we can actually use and rank for so that we can actually get that traffic and those extra visitors to our website. Because if we're choosing, and the, I, I've had this before, especially working on Fiverr and doing freelance work sometimes, you will return the research back to clients and they will still refuse to use your recommendations, which at the end of the day, I can't, you know, you can only lead a horse to water, you can't make it drink. However, I do recommend um, doing keyword research in order to find terms that you can rank for and using those terms. Otherwise, you're just going to be, you know, kind of fooling yourself in a sense of trying to try and rank for something like shoes or even Nike shoes. That would be like ridiculously hard to try and rank for. And you probably don't have the time or budget in order to be able to rank for a term like that. So that's why we, our whole strategy here that we're going to be talking about in this entire course is built around finding these long tail keyword phrases because and the reason we want to do that is threefold. Number one, lower competition, way lower competition. We actually have a chance of ranking for terms like this that are that are low uh, or long tail terms. The other thing is that it helps us optimize for semantic search. If in case you guys don't know what that means, it's when people are typing things into uh, Google or another search engine or nowadays they're on their phones, and that's really where semantic search came into play, is when people are talking into their phones, maybe they wanna look up, you know, dentist Atlanta, Georgia. So that would be a search term. Another thing would be, you know, um, hotels in Atlanta, Georgia. That would be semantic search, where it's almost like a conversation. It's it's human English, right? It's, it's usable, it's user-friendly, and it makes sense when you read it out. Um, even red Nike men's running shoes, that, that still makes sense when you're reading it out. Now, some terms, as you dive in more to the research, you, you will see that even terms like, maybe it'll be men's running shoes, Nike red. 
Now that's weird. That's sort of a weird term um, because obviously we know that people may be searching that in because they want to find those results, but it's very hard for us to use that in a way that would make sense in our content. Now, it's not impossible. There are creative ways that you can still use those, those terms. Um, for example, if it was a term that didn't read well, you could use it for optimizing images. You know, most blogs have hundreds of images and eventually you're going to have to use keywords a few times, but the best thing to do is use other variations of keywords. So that would be a great way to use a misspelling or um, another type of long tail phrase that doesn't really make sense. It wouldn't really make sense in an article or as a title, but maybe it would do well as a uh, image optimization or a video title um, inside of the the file name. So those are other ways that you can uh, optimize things that are that don't read well but are still valuable for SEO. So going back here for a moment between our our seed keywords or the short tail keywords and of course the long tail keywords then you have those middle phrases where maybe it's something like men's shoes or men, maybe it's like men's Nike shoes. So those would be in between uh, these two here. Now, a good rule of thumb is if it's one word, it's a seed keyword for sure, or a short tail keyword phrase. If it has three to four or more words, it can be considered a long tail keyword, usually if it's over four words or more, but sometimes even three. It just depends on your industry and market. Um, for example, online marketing or any type of marketing services, you're probably gonna need to go to like four keywords, uh, four words until you're getting into the longer tail keywords that are easier to rank for because there can still be a lot of competition when you're going for things like social media marketing or social media management. You can still have enormously high competition. So maybe things like social media management for small business. That would be a long tail keyword phrase that might be a better thing to go after. So that is the difference between short tail and long tail keyword phrases. And that just kind of puts in perspective what we're going to be covering over this entire course. And of course, you can see here, as we go along this curve, the chances of you converting these people also increase because that is a term that buyers are looking for, right? Someone that is ready to buy a new pair of tennis shoes, they're looking up, I want red Nike men's running shoes. So they're, they know exactly what they want and they're closer to being ready to buy. People that are just typing in shoes, they're nowhere near ready to buy. They don't even know what kind of shoes they want, right? So that's why we like to go after these long tail keyword phrases because not only are they easier to rank for, they're also going to be easier to convert people because we're targeting the people that are closer to the end of the customer buying phase. And we're gonna be talking about that later on in this course in case you're not quite familiar with what the customer buying phases are. Stay tuned for that later in this course and you can review that there. So that has been the two main types of keywords.